Hi, my name is Mike Kasiba. I work here at Mud Hole as part of the instructional staff, and we teach online classes and in-person classes. What we're going to show you today is how to set up a spinning rod to position the guides that takes into account the action of the rod, the reel that's being used on the rod, the handle length of the rod, and the type of the line that's being used. Uh, it's a very simple process. I'm going to take you through it step by step. I'm going to start with the materials that we're going to need or the supplies that we're going to need. First item is the spine finder and I've got it clamped to the bench because I'm going to be putting a pretty good amount of force on that. Second item is guide tubing. The guide tubing comes in four different sizes. I use all four sizes in my shop. Uh, that, that will allow me to cover a wide range of different rods, uh, different size rods. I've got guides. I have some extra what are called running guides and I already have some guides that are on the rod uh, and they are held on with this guide tubing. So that's how we position and you will see as we go through this that we're able to move the guides up and down the blank very easily using that guide tubing. I've got a piece of cord that I'm going to use to tie off the rod from the tip and I'm going to anchor that to another clamp that's on the table. This is called a two-line static deflection test, and that means that I'm just gonna tie off the rod from the tip, and then I can use the line from the reel and push it through the guides, and I can move the guides around without having to take the load off the rod, so I can evaluate how the line follows the blank when it's in a flexed position. I'm also gonna use a small casting plug, and the only, pers the only purpose for this is to put some tension on the line that's coming from the reel. I'm gonna start with some definitions. We're gonna talk about the action of the rod because we're gonna take advantage of that. Action is where the rod bends when you flex it from the tip. We're gonna talk about power, and primarily for this, we're talking about transferring power from the tip down through the butt. So we're talking about the lifting power of the rod. We're not so concerned with the casting power on this. We have what are called reduction guides. Those are guides that are close to the reel and those guides are going to be used to choke the line or to straighten the line out, get it running straight. And then we have what are called running guides. The running guides are small guides out towards the tip of the rod and those are going to keep the line close to the blank uh, especially when the rod is flexed into a fishing position. The, the rod has to have the handle either glued up or it has to have it very tightly dry fit on there so that you'll be able to flex this. And the tip top needs to be installed on the rod as well because that's what we're gonna anchor to, uh, to put a flex on. We would like to use the reel that's gonna be fished on the rod, but it doesn't have to be the exact one as long as it's of similar size. So if you're using a size 2500 reel of pretty much any manufacturer, you can work from that. And before you select the guides, you need to know what kind of line is gonna be used on the rod. And you can fine tune your guide selection a little bit knowing that. The setup that we're gonna to do today, this is a uh, CRV blank. It's an IS661M. This is what you would get in the uh, online basic class or in our in-person basic class. This is the, the blank that we would use. So I'm going to use Y-frame guides, model YG, for the three reduction guides. Those are the, the first three closest to the reel. And then I'm gonna use model R running guides going the rest of the way out. So these are stainless steel frame ceramic ring guides. I'm gonna set the rod into the spine finder, but I'm not gonna worry about flexing it over right now. I need to have an idea of where I'm gonna put these first three guides, and I need to have an idea of what sizes to use. Based on the real size that you're using, based on the line type and the line size, and based on the dimensions of different guides, what we can do is we can present in tabular form some good starting sizes and some good starting positions on the rod. And again, those are only starting places to let you put the guides on there. You can do your test casting to fine tune the position of them. 
You can go up on size or down in size if you need to, to fine tune performance. So what I'm looking at here is for a size 2000 reel with either monofilament, light monofilament or braided line, I'm going to use three reduction guides. The first one's a size 25, second one is a size 12, the third one is a size eight. And I'm going to position those. First one's gonna be somewhere around 21 inches from the front of the reel. Second one's gonna be another eight or nine inches out from the first one. Next one is gonna be about six to eight inches out from the second one. On the rest of the rod, this is a six foot six rod. So I put three guides out here. Just position them equally spaced uh, from this third guide out to the tip. And that's just a guess right now on a six foot six rod that I might only need three guides out there. Once I have that set up, I'm gonna take this rod outside and I'm gonna do some test casting. And it's just light casting. I'm not, I'm not trying to cast real hard for distance, but there's a couple things I'm gonna look for and I'm also gonna listen for. I wanna see if line bunches up against this first guide and I will see that and I will also hear it. Remember, line comes off of a spinning reel and coils. So as it coils out, if this guide is too close to the reel, that line's gonna hit there and those coils are gonna jam up against it. I'm gonna look for line slap on the blank in front of this first guide. So if those coils are going so far out that they're actually hitting against the blank here, that means this first guide is out too far and I would wanna move it back. Between the first and second guide, what I'm gonna look at is the line should be going straighter here than it was here. Between the second guide and the third guide, this line should be running almost perfectly straight and outside of this guide, that line should be running straight. Once I have those three guides in the position that I need them to meet that criteria that I have the line going straight after the third guide and I don't have any bunching or blank slap down here, I can move on to the next step. So the next step of this is where we're actually going to flex the rod. And I'm using that piece of cord that I talked about. I'm attaching it to the tip. That's why your tip top needs to be installed. I'm gonna put a good bend in this rod. Good fish fighting bend. And what I wanna look at now, my first three guides are already positioned. What I wanna look at now is how does the line follow the curve of the blank as it goes out towards the tip? And by, by following the curve of the blank, what I mean is, does it get far away from the blank in between two guides? like you see right here, and you see right here, and not quite so bad right here. In this case, yes it does. It doesn't follow the curve quite as much. So my initial guess of only putting three guides out there was probably not the best idea. Well, here's where this technique really shines. I have the rod flexed over. I put a bunch of extra pieces of tubing on there before I started. So I'm looking right here and I'm saying right here, that space between those two guides is way too much. So I'm just gonna squeeze another guide in here. I could now move this one. You see how I can just move it by sliding that rubber band. I keep the rod flexed over. I can put my line, so I added this guide in. I move this one back. You see how I've got it a little bit better here as far as the gap between the line and the blank and between those two guides. This one that I added in, I can move out just a little bit. This next one, I can also move out. This next one, I can also move out. And by adding one guide, I have completely changed the way that line follows the curve of the blank. It's looking real good here. It's looking just about perfect for the rest of these. So in this case now, I've got seven guides on this rod. I've got it following the curve of the blank from the end of the reduction guys out to the tip. I've got my three reduction guys positioned for uh, high performance casting. 
and I've got my ring sizes set to where if I need to cast a line leader knot through those guides or if I'm fishing in water that's got a lot of debris in it, a lot of weeds and stuff like that, it's not going to get picked up and it's, it's not going to clog those, uh, cl clog those guides up. At this point, I'm done with that. But before I put everything away, I'm going to set this rod down. I'm going to lay it down on a ruler and I'm going to mark from the front of the reel where each one of these guides is. And I'm just going to record that in a notebook. So for this one, I will have, uh, I'll record the blank, I'll record the guides, sizes that I used and styles, and then the distance from the front of the reel. After I've built a few rods, I'm gonna end up with a pretty good uh, reference book that's gonna allow me to uh, even do this much quicker. One big additional factor of this, this is a six foot six rod. If this rod was seven foot six, this first part of the setup is gonna remain basically the same. Distance from the reel for these first three guides and, and the size of these guides. The only difference is gonna be how many guides I have from the end of the reduction guides on out to the tip. So I would probably have to use more running guides. And that's how you would set up a spinning rod uh, for any type of fishing that you're gonna do, uh, any reel, any line, that is, that is how you would set up this, uh, this spinning rod. The process is done.